It's time now to uh, look at um, how we create a grid. So um, with this document, I've done a couple of little things here um, to get myself squared away. When we last talked, um, we were kind of here. I had come in and I had created a text frame. Um, so you know what, actually, I'm just going to delete that and do it again just to make sure. So I just came in, grabbed the text tool, and kind of went up to the top here and dragged out a text frame from the very top to the very bottom. And um, I kind of already did this for myself only because uh, it's easy to make it mathematically for myself. So um, I've switched to Myriad Pro because that's what I have. I want to change my uh, point type from being uh, 12 points to uh, 10 points. So I can do it by either by stepping in and um, typing it in or what I just did which is hit the down arrow. The issue that I'm having is that you'll notice that right here now um, the letting is now 12 points which is what I want. The problem is is that to that 12 points is surrounded by parentheses which tells me that that's auto letting. And as we know auto letting is going to take the uh, base point uh, type and multiply it by 120%. The problem is, is it isn't as accurate as we like and later on we're going to add some uh, baseline grid in here and that's why it gets a little funky. So I don't want it to be a um, auto letting. I want to enforce my own letting. So I'm just going to actually type 12 points in there and if I just hit the tab again or um, you'll notice that it actually did change it and now it's 12 points the parentheses are gone, meaning that it is a truly 12 point uh, type. I'm going to go up to the type menu and I'm going to fill it with um, a, a placeholder text, which is nothing more than lorem ipsum, as you know. And then I'm going to click on it, and you'll notice that now um, my entire, I've got one line of type on every single. Um, uh, line which means I've got 66 points of type there and that's really cool because now I can use that as my baseline grid a little later on so for now I, I, I'm not gonna really worry about it I'm just gonna leave it like that um, you'll notice that I what I already had here is as I have um, a couple of layers that I already created but now I wanna actually add my grid so I'm gonna um, hide my instruction layer and I'm gonna actually not hide it just um, go to my instruction layer and add a new layer above it and then that layer I'm gonna call um, I'm gonna call this the grid so I'm gonna create my grid on that layer uh, by default it's going to be red but I can change it to all sorts of colors uh, I'm gonna go down here and I'm changed mine to olive green uh, the color doesn't matter just as long as it makes sense for you and that's what's important the next thing that I want to do is is I want to create my grid but I don't really want to create it on um, this page I want it on my master so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go out to my master and um, my pages I'm sorry and I'm going to go to my master and you can see I only have one master and I'm just going to double click down in that area you can see as I click on I can select individuals we'll talk more about master pages later but you can see that if I, I can do it certainly like that by clicking and then clicking again but it's easier if I just click right in between right below them and now you'll notice that I'm not on this page Page anymore if I double click on it again I'm on that base page that I created page number two but if I come over here and I click in here uh, I come up here and I click in here I'm not on that anymore I'm now on the master and that's really where I want to be when I'm creating my grid okay so now that I'm there I'm gonna move that out of the way so we can see what's going on and I'm gonna kinda slide this over so we can see what's happened uh, I hit command shift uh, I'm sorry, Command Option Shift Zero. So if I hit Command Zero, I get um, full screen, fill the screen uh, to the page. Uh, I get 100%. Um, if I do Command Option Shift Zero, it's going to give bring me in at so I can see the full pasteboard. So now I can really see everything. It's probably a bit much for what we're doing, but I, I wanted just to see um, how that all works for us right now. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, now start in a, uh, a, a margin. So I'm going to go up to layout and I'm going to go to uh, margins and columns. And uh, it's going to pop up this dialog box. Um, actually, before I do it, I, I meant this to show you something from last time and I didn't. So remember last time I told you I could bring out guides that were um, brought out from the... Uh, 
page and I could do a spread guide or I could do a page guide. What I forgot to mention is, is if I hold the command key down, I can actually create spread guides that way as well. Um, but that was that. The other thing I forgot to mention is, is that um, if I right click on um, either one, I can change that from being points to um, picas to inches to pixels to whatever. And you'll notice that that one changed, but that one didn't change. So I would have to come in and change it there as well. It's a lot easier, however, if I just come right in here and I can change them both all at the same time by just coming right in here. I can click and now, now they're both inches and now I can go in there again, right click and now they're both pikas. So I can change it around however I want. I'm going to stay in pikas for now because a lot of the design work you do will be in pikas and um, it, it's just a way of getting used to it and the reason I'm doing that is so we can sh jump back and forth so I can show you how the pikas to inch kind of whole deal works because uh, you probably think in inches. All right, so getting started, I'm going to go back up to my layers layout menu. I'm going to go to my margins and columns. And uh, I'm going to start by uh, picking up a five uh, pica margin and make sure that my uh, broke, broken link is broken. I do not want to set them. If I would have had that uh, linked, it would set them all. I, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to set that to six. And then um, I'm going to actually kind of move out of the way. Watch what happens if I tab to another window. You can see that if I've got the preview checked, you can see that it adds both the um, uh, margin to the top and the margin to the bottom. So now what I want to do is I want to add my inside margin. So for now, I'm going to go with four and hit tab and bang it's instantly added my inside margin and on my bottom margin I am also going to go with four and I'm going to go hit on that and I'm going to go bang and and now I hit OK like a dummy I wasn't finished but you can see that it did put in all my margins and whatnot so I can come back the reason why I wasn't finished is I wanted to come out here and I wanted to add in um, a column and you notice that if I have no gutter on my columns you can see that it creates three columns which is great but I do want to have a gutter and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make my gutter um, one pica so that's going to be uh, 12 points which is the same uh, a distance the same width if you will as it is the height of my letting uh -huh -huh. now you can see I get some method to my madness which is the reason I did uh, things the way I did just to make my life easier mathematically automatically because all right so I'm gonna click OK and bang you can see that it's created it for me and that's pretty cool now so I've got myself all set up and I've got my column set up and I could do three column four column whatever but um, now what do I want to do is I, I want to change um, and and overlay this still on a on a guide or grid layer my grid so I want to add my grid to, to that uh, layer oops sorry to that layer. So I want to make sure that my grid is added to that layer. So I'm going to make sure I lock the base um, and oops, sorry, and um, make sure the instructions are locked. So the only place that I can actually do that is on my grid layer. Um, and, and you can see I didn't do that for that like a dummy. Okay. So now on my grid layer, I am going to go over and I'm going to now go up to my layout menu and I'm going to go to create guides. And now when the create guides menu comes up, I, I want to kind of move this so you can see everything. But at the same time, I want you to um, see the uh, document. So um, I, in reality, if I did this in multiples the way it should, um, I probably should have 16 rows um, because we're mathematically figuring out um, by 12 columns and um, and I'm going to leave the gutters at one um, pica and you can see that it, it, it created a very very nice grid for me that grid is easy to see and easy to understand but the, there's, there's a couple of problems with it the first problem is is that with 16 rows which makes sense you can see it makes a perfect symmetrical layout f uh, for my um, pages the problem is, is it's really confusing. While it works, it, it's really hard for us to see what's going on. So I'm actually just going to have that and make it eight grit, eight, I'm sorry, rows. And now I know that um, this to this is the equivalent of that. So it gives me a, a, just an easier way of seeing things. It's a little less visual clutter, if you will. Now, the other thing that I have happening here is you'll notice that uh, in my uh, Create Guides window, uh, I've got it fit in fitting. I've got it fit 
to the margin. If I fit it to the page, you can see how that whole grid system changes. It actually changes so that it fits for, um, I've got eight rows for the entire page. But I did, in fact, want it to margins. I want it only in my content area, if you will. So I'm going to click OK. And then now I got my grid. And if I click on, whoops, got to bring this back over. If I click on my um, grid layer, I can turn it on and off and uh, it does not affect the rest of my document, which is exciting, which is really kind of great. All right, I'm going to stay right here for a minute. And um, now I'm actually going to uh, uh, zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to scroll over to the top of my document because I want you to watch a couple of things. I'm going to move this guy out of the way. Uh, I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab the regular uh, text frame, uh, some the rectangular frame, I'm sorry. And I'm going to come up to that corner where it meets right there, right in the edge, and I'm going to drag out. And if I drag out one, uh, it's hard for me to get exactly where that um, first row would have been at 16. But if I drag out across two, I know that that two is now going to give me a perfect square if I go down to the first row. And bing, sure enough, I've got a square. But notice it's not perfect. I've got six pikes and four points. And then I've got, for my width, and then I've got um, six pikes even for my um, for my height, which means my height is correct. I've got exactly one inch, but my uh, width is a little wrong. And if I were to come over here and hold, see, notice it's the olive green that I set, and hold down the option key and drag so that I have six of these objects, which is essentially going to fill my grid while giving me a one pica gutta between each one, you'll notice that there is my math that I did earlier that I was showing you. Six times 6 is 36 plus 5 is 41. So all right, so what the heck does that math mean? I got to go unlock my instructions to bring that over so you guys can see it. So um, what the heck does that mean? Well, it actually means exactly what I just did. Um, I actually went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's six boxes. Um, across with one pica for each um, uh, gutter. So th that means it would be, the width of this should be 41. Now if I grab another rectangle and I come across and check it out and bring it across, you'll notice that I'm actually 43. So I really have two pikas more than I need. And so what I want to do is I want to rearrange this a little bit so that my boxes are the right size and that my width is 41. Why? Because I want to stay nice and neat and organized. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to delete those boxes and get rid of them because I don't need them anymore. Um, and then the next thing is I'm going to go to my layout and under my layout under my um, margin and grids uh, I'm going to come in here and I want to change this a little bit. I need to click on the enable uh, layout adjustment because that's in fact what I'm going to do. I'm going to adjust my layout. So um, I, I need to add two more pikes. So the easiest way for me to do that, of course, is to come in and I can do five plus five. Click um, If I click the preview, you can see that how it's changed. It's now dramatically changed. Uh, I've got an extra uh, pica on each side. Um, and um, it's giving me the opportunity to see what's going on. And then now when I come over and I redo my rectangle deal here, watch what happens. If I drag it out, I'm six pikas high by six pikas 0.29 so uh, I got a rounding error so now what I know is I've, I've created a document that is uh, in proportion to the letting and the gutter spacing and the row spacing of course of my document because everything now fits within that area and everything is proportional and uh, that's pretty cool because it makes sure that my grid is a proportional grid and everything will work proportionally for me as I go through so, um, I'm going to stop here. When we come back for the next movie, we're going to be talking about the baseline grid.